All right, problem three, we got a continuous function f defined on the closed interval from negative six to five. And this figure only shows part of it, part of the graph from negative two to five. And you can see it consists of two line segments and a quarter circle. The circle is centered at the point five, three. And we have the point three comma three minus root five is on the graph of f. So that would be this point here. Okay, so part A, if we know that the integral from negative six to five of f of x dx is seven, then find the value of the integral from negative six to negative two of f of x dx and got to show the work. Okay, so um, here's the strategy. You wanna basically use this and the value seven to figure out this. So let's set up um, a basic equation that we can use. So I'm gonna to try to fit all the work around here so you can see it all together. So I'm gonna squeeze this first part here. So the integral from negative six to five of f of x dx, that's equal to the integral from negative six to negative two of f of x dx plus the integral from negative two to five f of x dx. And you can set that all equal to seven because you're told here that this entire integral is equal to seven. So if you wanna find the integral from negative six to negative two, this part right here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna subtract just this integral from seven. So let me, let's set up this integral over here. So the integral from negative six to negative two of f of x dx is equal to seven minus the integral from negative two to five of f of x dx. So let's find what the integral from negative two to five is here. Now remember the integral you can essentially interpret as the area between um, the function and the, and the x-axis in terms of x, that is. Anytime the um, area is above, it'll be a positive quantity. Anytime the area is below, it's, it's a negative quantity. So see the shaded region From here to here, then these two triangles, let's first focus on these two, because if you notice, these two triangles are just, are the same triangle, but just flip. So these two triangles cancel out. So when you get a zero from negative two to zero, or yeah, from negative two to zero. And, and from this, from zero to one, these two, these two triangles also cancel themselves out. So you don't need to waste your time calculating the area. Now from here out, we have the area here of one, and then we have this triangle here with an area of half of two times one. So that's just also one. So we have one and one. So, so far we have this equal to seven minus zero plus zero, we can ignore that time, minus, and here we'll have one plus one. And then, um. See, now you have this region underneath this quarter circle. Now to, now, to find this region here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna subtract the area of this quarter circle. So let me try to do the red. The quarter circle here in red, I'm gonna subtract the I'm going to subtract the area of the entire square here, nine minus this red region to get this region here. So, and then I'm going to add that to, to um, two. So plus nine minus, again, this entire square minus this red, red area. This red area is a quarter circle. So area of a circle is pi r squared. So this is one fourth pi r squared. And the radius here is three. So one fourth three squared. Mm -hmm. 
just didn't bleed out so far. Okay. Then it's really just simplifying this now. So we get seven and be careful with the signs because this is where it gets a little tricky or annoying or tedious, I guess. So nine, so two plus a nine minus a nine fourths pi. So two plus a nine is 11. So you're gonna have seven minus 11. So you're gonna get negative four minus a negative nine fourths pi. So that'll be plus nine fourths pi. This will be the answer for A. All right, B, evaluate the integral from three to five of two F prime of X plus four DX. Okay, so here, what you're gonna do is set up the proper integral. Well, of course, but um, you want to, the, the main thing is to recognize that um, F, the antiderivative of F prime of X is just F of X. So let's first just break this up. Let me, um, actually now we, we don't need to waste time breaking up, let's go with it. So we got the antiderivative of F prime of X is just F of X. So here we're gonna get two times f of x. Let's break this integral up. No, it's actually not break it up. <laughs> plus the antiderivative of four, so plus four x. And we're just integrating from three to five. And so we get two f of five, two times f of five, f of five, just look at the graph, that'll be zero. Plus four times five, so four times five, so plus 20, minus the lower limit, so two times f of three. f of three, you see, that's where you got the, um, that's where you got this guy right here, the three minus root five. So two times three minus root five plus four times three. And again, we just gotta be careful we don't mess up on our algebra. Just taking it down here. This would be zero, 20 minus Six minus, whoops, minus two root five plus 12. So you get a 18, 20 minus 18. So 20 minus, yeah, 20 minus 18, you get two minus two root five. No, not minus. So let me say, minus minus plus two root five. Ooh, got that. Two plus two root five. Okay, and there you go. There's your answer for part B. For part C, the function g is given by g of x is equal to the integral from negative two to x of x to t dt. Find the absolute maximum of g on the interval from negative two to five. Justify your answer. Okay, so um, first recognize that this involves the fundamental theorem of calculus part two, where if you integrate this, or if you find this, um, or if you find the, sorry, if you find the derivative of G, this undoes the integral and this will just be F of X. So um, let's see, let's, let's do, I'm gonna do part C down here. So G prime of X is simply equal to F of X. Now, when remember, if you remember from um, the chapter where you're studying maximums and minimums and extreme values, extreme values, to find um, um, absolute maximums or minimums, you want to study the you want to study the derivatives and find the critical values. So you want to find where g prime of x would be zero or undefined, or in other words, where f of x would be zero. So we just look at the graph, literally where f of x would be zero. 
that would be at negative one and at one half, negative one, one half, and five. So these are possible critical values. Now, so you want to, you can simply just test these values out, plug them into G of X, see what, which one's the biggest, but also make sure you check the endpoints. So also use negative two. So I would just make a table, um, put in, um, that's also, so again, let's throw in negative two. Let's add this table here and find what G of those G of X is for those values. So G of negative one. So using, um, where am I going? Oh yeah, using this. So the area from negative two to negative one. So G of negative two to negative one is just, again, this region right here. It's just that triangle, so that'll be one half. G of one half. So going from negative two to one half, from negative two to one half, these cancel, remember? And then since you're only gonna, so since you're gonna stop here, it would be the area of this triangle below the x-axis. And that would be one fourth or negative one fourth since it's below the x-axis. And then G of five, again, we can, we, G of five would be, let's write it out over here. If you need the work, G of five is integral from negative two to five of f of t dt. And you can just find the um find the area from here to here. And now if you remember that's the value you're subtracting from seven in part A. So over here, if you remember it was this part, it was this was this was um c negative two to five was this whole thing. Or I'm sorry, this whole this whole thing. So it would be um, 11 minus 9 pi, nine, mi 11 minus 9 fourths pi. Can't really fit that, so let me, 11 minus 9 fourths pi. Whoops, there we go, 11 minus 9 fourths pi. And then g of negative two, you're, since you're going from negative two to negative two, there's no area, the endpoints are the same. So this is just be zero. So your absolute maximum would be this. This would be your absolute maximum. Now, um, when they show, um, when they say uh, justify your answer, it's, it's, it's usually good enough to just show um, a clear work like a table and you're checking derivatives you don't have to like necessarily write all in a sentence um if you feel comfortable you can but sometimes when you write it all out in words what you're doing you may, you may mess up or remember the reader doesn't know doesn't doesn't know you as a student so it's like if you write something off or technically incorrect you could be you could just be marked down if maybe the reader is, is strict but if you have correct to work with the correct answers there, it's not, you're not gonna get these answers by being lucky. Just make sure you're organized with your work. All right, part D, find the limit as X goes to one of this whole guy. Um, let's just try to first plug in one. It, it, I think it'll work. So 10 to the one minus three times F prime of one. F prime of one is the derivative at one or the slope of, the, of this line. So this would just be two, because this is the slope of this is just two. Over F of one, going back to the graph, F of one is just one, minus the arc tangent of one. So remember your trig, what angle do you have the sine and cosine functions the same? Now there's two possible angles. It would be pi over four and negative pi over four and five pi over four. But remember the domain of the domain is restricted to to negative pi over two and pi over two. So this is just be minus pi over four. And then your answer is just really this. You can simplify it. 
10 minus 6, so 4 over 1 minus pi over 4. But it's a non calculator, so you just leave it like this. All right, so there you go. I hope that helps. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments, and um, if there are any other um, topics or videos you'd like to cover, I'll do my best to help you out. And please help me out by subscribing. Thank by subscribing, and again, um, let me give me feedback. Any feedback is usually appreciated.